My name is John and I'm at Paint School on Instagram. I've done over $15 million in paint jobs and I'm based out of Huntington Beach, California. Aaron is at Alpha Painting on Instagram. He's managed huge commercial projects with impossible timelines and has a few years into building his own operation out of Branson, Missouri. And you should probably check out our full process videos on YouTube because they're pretty badass. Our point in doing this podcast is to put our 40 plus years of combined experience to the test. We've seen a decline in the industry. And while I think it's a bit arrogant to think we can change it, we're giving it a shot. Listen up and let us know what you think. This is Paint Sniffer Podcast. All right, uh, we are back for episode 23. Um, I think uh, we could touch base. I'm still working on on doing this expansion into LA. Um, we had talked about, I was gonna kind of put things on hold and then you know, my estimator really wants to do an LA location for cabinets. And I'm okay with doing that, you know? So we're, we're gonna do cabinets only in LA and that'll probably start end of this year, early next year. Um, We've got a guy who does sales for a kitchen cabinet company or kitchen countertop company. And they also do new cabinets, but they don't have anybody that does refinish work. So they've been referring us to all their refinish clients. You know, they go do countertops. They say, hey, call this guy if you want to refinish your cabinets. Um, So we did one estimate in LA so far. Um, and Inglewood, which uh, apparently has become nicer since the last time I was out that way. So right now I'm trying to figure out which location I want to have an office in, you know, and I'm trying to plan out like, because I imagine we'll have two or three offices out there at some point, two or three locations technically, because it's such a big area. So currently I'm looking at office space and when I say office space, I'm talking like a a 100 square foot office, just a place that has an address that I can receive mail at um, because Google and Yelp both want a physical location if they're going to let you advertise on it. Um, So we're looking at like the Reseda area. It's surrounded by like Beverly Hills and Calabasas is out that way. It's kind of a, a Culver City, you know, an area where we can catch a bunch of zip codes that are desirable. And then from there, free Google my business page, free Yelp page, and and then eventually start paying money for advertising. Yeah. Dude, on speaking on cabinets, I have a fucking whole kitchen I have to warranty. I yeah. did like three years ago. Um A lot, luckily, um, the kitchen island and all the cabinets in the bathrooms were all stained in lacquer. Mm -hmm. And the the paint was pigmented Sherwood lacquer, um, catalyzed pre-cat. So the primer surfacer and then the the top coat, um, I can't remember, dull rubs, like TWF, whatever. I can't remember, Mm -hmm. but... uh, I'm not too impressed with the wear on these cabinets. They look like they've been fucking super hard on them. Yeah. Um, and I can just see like areas of, you know, like on some outside corners where it's, it's like, uh, been worn down to raw wood. I don't know if they're like rubbing up against them or something, but yeah, the deal is I, I did these cabinets were rushed and they came right out of the cabinet shop and I finished them in the field in a finished environment. The homeowners wanted them cocked and I didn't tell them no. And uh, I fucking, you know, made it a point to to not cock, you know, under my, uh, my sealer coats and I, I cocked them you know, underneath the, the finish coat. And Mm -hmm. for the longest time, like I've looked, I went and I assessed them. I had a rep come out. I, I had a door sent off to the lab and did a PQR on them. And it was determined that the, you know, the wood has shrank or whatever, but, Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to get the homeowner to fucking, you know, see if the cabinet shop would, would warranty it or 
or mm-hmm. co- you know come in or co- cover some of the fucking cost and they won't do it you know i told the dude you know well it's not my fucking deal but um you know if it comes down to it i will refinish them so we're like yeah. two years into this now i'm just gonna have to fucking do it yeah so i'm gonna have to cut out all the caulking uh i'm gonna have to figure out a way to cut a linear sander pad like the ls130 and mm-hmm. sand in that corner and then sand everything down and i'm gonna 1107 and 400 series them mm-hmm. um and i was talking to to one of the guys on instagram and you know i, I i'll probably i'm probably only going to clean up the outsides the insides i'll probably caulk them with with qd um, but the outsides, I've been talking to a dude, and he uses like uh, some type of, it's like Loctite. It's almost like a, uh, seems more like it's a, like a liquid Nels. It's like a glue mm. in a tube. Yeah. And I'm just to have something extremely hard underneath my finish. I'm going to, I think I'm going to caulk them with that. He said he's had good luck with it. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that sucks. That's a huge fucking deal for me what i'll probably do is i'll take all the doors and i'll just work on them at the house and um refinish the doors at the house and then then i'll i'll take the guys and we'll go spend a couple days encapsulating the kitchen and and uh spraying the boxes Mm -hmm. but yeah and you know i i know for sure the doors have shrank and, you know, that's essentially been the leading cause in, you know, the lacquer busting out over the caulking. But also, I am not fucking, you know, as I'm cutting this shit out, you realize, fuck, dude, this stuff is too soft to be underneath this coating. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We've been using, um, man, I don't know what the name of this caulking is. I want to say it's like All Pro. Um, but it's a urethane material, and we've been using that under 2K poly. Mm-hmm. Um, if we use a regular caulking that we have typically used, the 2K will shrink over it. You know, mm-hmm. so you get like little rigid cracks in the coating, not in the caulking, but in the coating. And so we switched. I don't remember. We got a recommendation for this caulking and started using it, and no issues at all with it like that. But I wonder, I know that dries a lot harder. Um, and I don't know what the flux is like on it long term because we've only been using it for like a straight so. urethane, not water based at all. It's got to be water based. Um, I know I have some in my truck. I'll have to check it out. Um, but it's been a pretty good product. But it's like eight bucks a tube. You know, expensive shit. Let me see if I can pull yeah. it up here online. I mean, technically, you just need something that fucking doesn't have elasticity like a standard siliconized acrylic latex, you know? Right. Yep. All right. All pro. Long tube. I've just been using some, uh, I just used some all pro clear caulking. Mm-hmm. Um, shit dries, dries pretty fucking hard, but it shrinks a bit. Yeah. Sure. One's been out of clear caulking for, I don't know how long. Yeah. Isn't it weird? The random shit that is gone. Like we can't get three ten tips around here for some reason. I talked to a district manager like during the shortages and they said that like Sherwin will get a shipment of like raw materials from China and they'll test it. And if it's not good, they'll deny it. Yeah. So I'm, I know that that's happened a time or two during all this, plus all the, the, the shipping constraints and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's fucking weird. Like how long were those ships just sitting outside a port of fucking, Long Beach, you know? Long time. Yeah, dude. Like, why? 
it it seems like it was on purpose, you know? Yeah, it was weird. So I I mean, there's so many different reasons that they gave, and maybe one of them are true, maybe all are true, maybe none of them are true. But it was like the the staffing for people to offload the ships was cut down. Um, and I don't know, because that it was a COVID thing, right? They couldn't have as many employees there at once, or they laid people off. Um, truck drivers to ship the material out was short. Like, who knows? Um, but yeah, so we're just getting like random shit that's not available, you know, like for Dunn Edwards, no deep bases, no ultra deep bases. So anything black or anything like that, we're getting at, um, Sherwin Williams. Um, and then no 310 tips, you know, Graco 310s anywhere. My guy went to the store yesterday to get one and this has been going on for a couple of weeks, but they were like, nobody in orange County has a 310 tip. Like what the fuck? (laughs) How's that even possible? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah, dude, even even orders on uh Graco parts, you have a lead time of multiple months, probably two to three months. Yeah. It's wild. So like Or maybe it's I know not there are... two to, it, it it might be like six weeks or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know there are issues in China right now. I, to what extent, we don't know, but there's a lot of issues going on in China. Um, and I think a lot of our shit gets made there. And then we do have trucking issues, you know, with shipping. Not enough truckers. Um, we've got this, um, I forget what it is, AB5 bill or whatever that's been working on getting passed. Um, so, like, no gig workers, so... Technically, if you're like a truck driver, you can't be an independent gig worker. You know, you have to be a company or you have to be a W-2 employee, no 1099 shit. So that's had a pretty bad effect on or is in the middle of having a bad effect on shipping. You know, and that's one of the things like the paint stores blame shortages on these days is, oh, there's not enough truck drivers to ship material, you know, which I have no idea. May or may not be true. Um uh, there's Crazy. there's all kinds of negative things going at once. Mm-hmm. I watched a video of a dude that that was at the at the docks in Long Beach and he was like videoing around and shit and he's like, Don't believe what they tell you. Like we could be unloading right now. They're just telling us not to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like that kind of shit, you know, like I, yeah. for sure that could be true, right? It's like they raise everybody raised rates over the last couple of years. And I guarantee some of it was manufactured. Some of it is just like, hey, we don't have enough employees. What do you want us to do? You know, yeah. and that's going to cost more, right? When maybe you could hire more employees. Maybe you can get the system more efficient. Um, or you could just raise prices and still do things slower. <laughs> it's yeah. like best of both worlds if you're the one making the money. Shipping containers got super expensive for people shipping overseas. I think they went from like 3,500 to like 20,000, some shit like that. So like all the clothing makers. Um, oh, to actually you know. purchase a Conex. Yeah. Yeah. So if you bought like a shipping container from China, have them fill it up with clothes for you and whatever else you sell, you know, it was 2,500 or three grand for a container to have it shipped, you know, and then you fill up with whatever you fill up, um, went to 20 grand to get one of those same containers and that happened over like a year, you know, in a one year period, it went from three grand to 20. There's so much stuff that got screwed up. Like just the butterfly effect of everything. It's crazy. All right. Um, yeah. And so like with people, I had mentioned this in our last podcast that there were people, you know, starting to feel like the slowdown and everything. Um, And asking, oh, what do I do? I don't know. How do you get business? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I think for most people at this point, it's like you just have to go back to hustle mode. You know, like when you're starting your company, you probably hustle a little more to get leads, hustle a little more to close jobs. Um, 
there's still a lot of stuff you could do for free, you know, like all the Facebook posts, you know, like on any of your business pages, you can, if you're just constantly posting stuff, you're going to get noticed. Like people are going to come across your page. Um, Facebook is a place where you can post for free as much as you want. Um, your Google My Business page, post pictures there. If you post, um, you know, verbiage, if you put in there like a mini blog post, basically. Um, I mean, you can do that every week, like every other day if you want to. You're going to get traction. It's just you have to be consistent. Same on a website. Um, you know, like one of the main things that SEO companies will do to increase traffic on your website is a blog post. And it's just searchable words. Like right now, um, you know, we'll probably do this at some point, but we can make a website for this podcast and we can translate uh, all everything that we're saying right now into text. You know, there are programs we can just upload the audio file of this of this episode, upload it into a system. It'll convert it all to text. And then you just post that text on your website. You know, now you have like a fucking... I don't know how many words it is, but two hours worth of uh, uh, speaking in a text format. So like some of the companies doing SEO or like an SEO package will say, um, you know, read, read out a script or something like that, or have a conversation about exterior painting for 15 minutes, convert that all to a text, and then there's your blog post. You know, you just got it done in like 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, but so those are free things that everybody can do right now That's that will drive traffic. If you're starting now, it's probably a little too late. <laughs> well, not too late, but it's going to take a little bit of time to kick in. Um, I feel like Google takes about a year to start generating traffic. Yeah, depending on how long it takes you to, like if you're just letting it grow organically, then yes. Right. If you're well, just know, letting though, leads come in. I, I, I put in a bunch of work trying to generate, you know, phone calls off of Google and I didn't start noticing it for about a year. Yeah. And dude, I would, uh, I would even just, I'd sit there and just call the phone, you know, like go to go- search painters where I'm at, call the number. Yeah. Um, I would, go to the website links. I do that every single day and just trying to generate traffic. But Uh so about a year, what do you think your reviews were at? Like starting out and getting to one year, did your reviews help? Uh, Was that like a turning point? uh, Like maybe I might've had maybe 12 or 15 reviews after about a year. Um, Uh I'm at 30 now and I've got that one fucking bad review where some asshole gave me a one star review because I didn't go to an estimate, which really pisses me off. They shouldn't be allowed to do that if you provided them with no service, you know, and they didn't pay for any fucking thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So I'm I'm now at 4.9. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're, I don't know what, um, I had an ex-employee leave a bad, not a bad review, but uh, like three stars or something like that. I don't even think they put any verbiage in there. Um, it was just three stars. That you know? that that would be considered a conflict of interest though, right? The employee yeah, but, thing. Yeah, but fucking good luck getting anybody at Google to do anything. Yep. I've, <laughs> I don't know if I told you this. I have a... I think a one star review for myself that I can't yeah. fucking get off my Google page. Yeah, you told me that. Like, what the fuck, dude? I've I <laughs> I tried a lot like for a couple months and now I just go back and try like every I did, every now I and did then notice I <laughs> when I had few reviews when my when my ex got on there and ma- was making fake Google accounts to to give me bad reviews. Yeah. Um yeah. that tanked it tanked my listing. Right. Like it made me go down like yeah. 10 spots or so. And right now I've noticed like in Hollister, I still stay at the top. Um, and in Branson, I'll usually bounce around between like second and third. Yeah. Um, so it, the, the bad review hasn't affected me 
like when I had less reviews. Yeah. Um, but I was also able to get those ones removed. Yeah, um, you were. Yeah. Was that all just online? Like all just. Yeah, uh, I just I yeah. just kept for like weeks and weeks. I kept sending a request for conflict of interest. Yeah. And this time around, I I did it for like two weeks in a row, and nothing's happened. And eventually, I'll spaz out and I'll fucking start doing it again. But yeah, it seems like no one at Google gives a fucking shit. But yeah, you'd think there would be somebody to sit there and assess, like, oh, you know, this this person, you know, judging by all the other reviews and blah blah blah. Right. This, you know, we should remove this you know but i don't know i don't think they do have any one person that looks at stuff like that there you are number three in branson dandy paint co what the hell yeah they're obviously paid (laughs) yeah only nine reviews on them yeah, there's some people too. You'll you'll notice they have like one review and they'll they'll sit at the top of the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is something to be said for paying money to to be at the top on some of these things. Yelp didn't used to be like that. Um, we used to get like fucking forty or fifty calls a week from Yelp, just because we were ranked like number one in a lot of different areas. Forty fucking calls a week. And then they changed their system to show all the advertisers first and then their top 10 and then calls dropped off a cliff. Yeah. Down to like fucking 10, you know, it's crazy. I, I almost feel like the cold calls are not valuable. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Like people well, randomly. Yeah. Calling like you? the, the random phone calls, like somebody will be like, Oh, this person has good reviews. I give them a call, and it always seems like they're people that want to use a reputable company, but they don't want to pay any money for it. So yeah. it almost seems like the the jobs that I get are from referral. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the referral and repeats are way better leads always. You know, because those are people that have some idea of what you cost, at least just a general. You know, because Whoever referred them is going to be like, you know, it wasn't the cheapest, but they did excellent work, you know, or it was expensive, but they did really good work when you're getting random phone calls. So like, you know, I probably get, um, I don't know, five, five leads per day, let's say through Yelp. Um, they're, they start out as messages a lot of the time. Some of them are phone calls, but the area that I'm in, everything is more expensive anyway, right? So like more painting companies here are expensive than are cheap. Well, more that are on the radar. If you went on like the Yelp top 10, um, people are going to be more competitive with my pricing. You know, we're going to be more similar than in your area. Your price is like probably sky high compared to the majority of people there. Yeah, it sucks, dude. Uh, Like, yeah, with my area... That's the the huge thing. That's the biggest reason I have a problem with with like these fucking tool salesmen all over the fucking internet and people selling like workshops and charging people for workshops and people that are hey I'm a fucking you know uh, a public figure or all this shit, dude. Like. In, in, in a, I could be wrong, but in my headspace, it seems like it overall devalues the industry because it brings in people that otherwise wouldn't look at something like this. Yeah. And it takes away, it takes away like the, you know, like, you know, somebody going to like the PCA because, you know, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. Hey, painting, I can buy some paint brushes and, you know, they go learn the business aspects and well, guys like you and me or, you know, not specifically you, but guys like myself that have been in the field their whole career that uh, don't know shit about business, but they're field guys. And, 
don't know how to take those next steps and stuff are usually just trapped working yeah. for somebody else. Like those are the guys that need help with business. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those, so, you know, yeah. and, and it, it pisses me off that they're handing out the reward of ownership and business to people that are not vested in the field. And if you imagine that over a large scale and over the years, like think about all the people that are out there that you already deal with in real life and in your sector in terms of the field in the first place that don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. And overall, like I think competition stimulates growth, right? But overall, if, if everyone was better at what they do and took pride in what they do, then everyone could get more money. And then that would make your price look even more appealing if you're expensive. You see what I mean? Right. So yeah. when you're in a market uh, where everyone doesn't appreciate it from general contractors to homeowners wanting something cheap, um, I feel like it's harder to get paid. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, even the shitty painters, dude, like I go into the paint store fucking every week, there's a new business card and the accessibility is the problem. Like, uh, I go in there and like pretty much everybody on that board is going to be half my price. Right. So how does that make me look in comparison when they get like three or four bids? So they'll be like, Oh, this dude's just fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's just expensive. Off. He's trying to get yeah. one over on us. And uh -huh. when in all reality, dude, we're doing shit from top to bottom the way it should be done. So we're spending yeah. more money to make it right. And, and mm -hmm. these people that are just using the fact that this trade is easily accessible are just getting one over because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And yeah. if all those people on the board realized like, you know, it, and it, it drives me nuts. They could just add two dollars a square foot onto everything, and nobody right. could do anything to fucking change it. Yeah, which is funny because the people coming in at those super cheap prices, doing cheap work, are really the ones getting one over on you, right? Because you're yeah. gonna have to redo their shit. Like, you know, it seems like, it, oh, great, we're only gonna pay five grand instead of ten. Yeah, but it's gonna look like shit in like a year yeah. or two. You know, and then you have to, and then the next time around, you're not going to pay five grand because you know what five grand gets you. So you're going to have to pay 10 anyway. You know, I got one coming up. Yeah. I got a, a job coming up in interior that is fucking destroyed. And, uh, I bought a, a new camera just so I could see how shitty it is. You know what I mean? So yeah. when I, when I make the video on it, uh, yeah, I want it to be crystal clear and shit, but yeah. Yeah. So and look, I think the, I think the original um, intent for like the PCA was the PDCA now PCA um, was to bring, like, give opportunity for contractors who are from a painting background to learn the business side. You know, that was the original intent. It's like, hey, um, we know all the painters out there. Most of them don't have any kind of formal training system. Don't have any kind of um, background in business. They're just really good painters who decided to do it on their own. And so that was the original intent. Nowadays, I think it's more like, uh, it's, that's still technically their intent, right? Is to, cause they, they put on these like classroom type things, right? Where it's like, how do you sell your jobs for higher prices? How do you figure out project management? How do you figure out job costing? You know, they still have all of those things. Well, that's the thing that there is a problem in what you just said right there. How do you figure out project management? Yeah. You should have been a project manager before you ever started right. your own fucking business. You know, you see <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? So there's right, right. <laughs> there's lies within all that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Hypothetically, that should be a role. Yeah. Yeah. You like, should have gone through in order to run your own company. Yeah. We we should be handing that like all the years that, you know, you bleed for this shit. You should hand that down to, you know, I don't know if you hand it down to a family member or yeah. or if, you know, you have somebody that ends, ends up working for you for a long time and you hand those business skills down to him and yada, yada. But you don't just charge people a couple thousand dollars or whatever it is 
and just give it to them for fucking yeah. that, dude. Like right. you're not fixing anything. You're not making yeah. anything better. Yep. You're you're bringing more inexperience and chaos into something that needs a lot of help. Yeah. By people that know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, that is an interesting. So do you think that um, more like good painters are still coming up through the ranks? I, I think what's most common and like in my area, uh, just like this this new guy that we've had working for us, he's gone now. Um, thank God I, I put up with his shitty attitude for way too long, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, people will come in and they'll look around and they'll be like, uh, and especially that's a, the big thing that I liked about commercial is it doesn't matter if you come in with 20 years experience, you're going to fucking suffer and you're going to have to get yeah. down in a repaint. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's slower going. It's, you know, yeah. sometimes it's not, it's not as hard as what you could be. So uh, people come in and they're like, I could do this. And like right. somebody will probably work for a couple months. Um, they'll quit, they'll get fired. They'll go somewhere else, say that they have two years experience. They'll do that a couple yeah. more times. And in six months you have a 20 year painter. Yeah. Um, so those are business. a lot of, those are a lot of the people that start their own businesses. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause people that want to be independent from the start when they don't realize that, you know, really, dude, you, even after a four year apprenticeship, you have a good 10 years to, of, of just muscle memory and process and, and, yeah. you know, substrate study to, to get to the stage to where it's really like you're calculated with everything you do. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's where like, um, you know, I, I've seen posts recently where, um, someone's asking on Facebook, how do I strip this front door? You know? And it's like, what kind of stain should I use? What kind yeah. of clear should I use? It's if like, you're at that stage, you should, practice you should door. probably not do a fucking exotic front, a hardwood yeah, front door. Don't do that you know kind saying? of job. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, you know, but how do you police that? You know, like people are going to go fuck up front doors all over the place. You know, yeah. it's like, man, I mean, I get like painting a bedroom or something like that. Even that, you know, we've painted plenty of times where you see shitty lines everywhere. You see patches like nail holes, people spackled over with a putty knife and then never sanded it, you know, like, Oh, it looks pretty good to me. Right. Um, yeah. so you see that shit painted over all over the place. Um, but like a front door job, you know, somebody goes in and prices that thing for like 400 bucks to strip and refinish. Oh yeah. And then they get into it and they're like, fuck, I'm making like $20 a day. You know, I try uh, not to do them because I have to make like 12 trips, dude. Yeah. I and know. So, that's why I, that's yeah. why I tell people, I'm like, look, we're going to make a bunch of trips. It's going to be like, you know, after the first two visits, we're going to be there for like 45 minutes a day, Yeah, but we have to come out there like three days in a row, you know? No, like, yeah, me literally, I have to do, I think the, the minimum amount is 11 or 12 trips for the whole process. I charge between four to $5,000 for a feature door restoration. And yeah. I don't give a fuck if I never do one again. <laughs> yeah. I don't charge enough for them, but you're also doing like a pretty high end finish on them. Yeah. You know, yours is pretty high end. Mine is like middle to upper, but. So that's another difference. I think that high end, like that top 5% is where a lot of the money comes in at, you know, cause like my door, um, I might charge like 1500 bucks or 1800 bucks to do a front door. Um, but if I spent the extra five trips getting that top coat super fucking dialed in like you would, then yeah, I would charge four or five grand for it, you know, cause that's like the top end. That's not, not anybody can be doing that work. Um, it's a lot of attention to detail, the different product knowledge. But then the end result is like, damn, that door's fucking smooth. Well, I mean, the finish is the easy part, I think. And and the stripping is not mm -hmm. hard. The Where you have to be careful, you know, post-neutralization with like oxalic or something mm -hmm. is, you know... You know, you got a water pop and then you have to, the sanding is where it comes in. Like, well, I guess, I guess during the stripping process, you have to make sure 
that you get everything off of there. And that's, yeah. that's simple. If you're, you know, you're like wire brushing it out of the grain where you fuck up, where you can fuck up bad is, is, uh, over sanding. Yeah. Because if you over sand one spot, then you have to over sand the entire door. So, but most people don't know what that looks like. Yeah. Right. Most people don't know what that looks like till they get their first coat of stain on or clear on or whatever. And then you're like, fuck, why does this thing have spots all over the place? So even with my guys, I'll have to inspect a door before we go to stain or clear coat. Um, because almost nobody, and it's hard, like, so these are some of the things you're talking about earlier. I don't know how you teach somebody without experience what that door should look like, like how to look for all the issues, how to see if something is going to accept the stain the same way one panel as the other panel. You know, but there's like a visual, there's a way to tell for the most part, like, you know, you could probably be 95% accurate on when panels are ready to stand, maybe a hundred percent. Um, you ever stained a a whole door, you ever stained a door and like realize, oh shit, there's water spots in this or it doesn't look consistent. And then Uh you sand that same, you sand the door down. But yeah. you still have, you can still, you know, see the stain, the stain absorbed into it. And, uh-huh. you know, as you're sanding it and after you sand it, it, it fucking, it looks terrible. Yeah. Right. But as soon as you put stain on it, it's like, it's refreshed. Right. It's, yeah. it's kind of like that in a sense, but you don't have stain backing that because you've done scrubbed it out of all the grain. Yeah. So it's similar to something like that, but, um, yeah, it, it's all fucking trial and error. You can't actually practice on a door. Like I'd, I would practice on like, a like, uh, furniture and shit from like, a yeah, you know, from like a yard sale or something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've had guys, uh, say that a door is ready for stain and then I go and check it out and it's like, fuck, we're not even close. Uh, we did a deck recently. Oh, maybe a couple months ago. And the guy said, okay, it's all sanded down, ready to go. You know? And I was like, all right, send me some pictures, sent me pictures. I was like, all right, you know, I circled some spots on the picture. This is not ready. That one's not ready. You know, like in order for the stain to accept evenly, like this shit has to be sanded really well. So I was like, all right, well, get the deck wet, you know, and if the water shows up evenly, we're probably fine. Let it dry out, stain it. If it's not, you're going to see blotchiness. Like if you didn't get some of that sealer up, um, it needs to be sanded more. Fucking got it wet. Sure enough, there's fucking spots all over that, you know, strips and sections that need to be sanded more because it still has sealer on it. Yeah. But it's like that kind of stuff um, without having experience, like it all looked sanded you know, when it's dry. Um, but it's not sanded well enough in some areas, you know, and if you just fucking put stain on that, it's going to look terrible. Yeah. And then you're presenting that product to a client saying, there it is. This is why I'm half the price. (laughs) Crazy. All right. Um, Oh man. So, Continuing on the rest of this year, you've got, what are you booked until like November or something like that? I think so. Um, I, I'm still like, I've never been able to get past the stage of when my schedule got all fucked up and being able to project oh, yeah. where, you know, where I'm at now. So I feel, yeah, I feel like I'm like November, December ish. And um, then how is winter for you? Is that, is that tough to, to book? for you or usually able to just squeeze in a couple of interior projects to carry you through since since i started like i haven't i haven't stopped so i don't i don't know you know what i mean um Mm -hmm. i i am consistently getting calls so as i start to you know if i get to the point to where um things are gonna i i foresee things slowing down then I guess, you know, like worst case scenario, start bidding Mm -hmm. lower to put some shit on the books if I had to, or, you know what I mean? Because, but, you know, like we just discussed like, uh, you know, like if say every painter in this town 
raise their price two dollars. They don't you know, even if they're the worst painter in the world, they don't realize that if everyone incrementally did it, or I mean, if everyone did it yeah. at once, then it wouldn't That'd be the new bottom. It wouldn't change. Yeah, it wouldn't change That'd the market be, that's at all. Gas prices, gas prices yeah. raises everything up two bucks and then drop it down one dollar, and everyone feels like they're getting a deal now. So I bid a lot of shit that I don't get. Um, I don't think that it's, you know, I'm always, uh, I'm super self-critical. I don't think that, it, uh, it's due to the fact of me being shitty at sales. It's just due to the fact that my market is lower. So yeah. I am digging through the people that want to pay for quality, you know, and, yeah. and to, that's to try true. Yeah. to try and extract that from like middle-class people is pretty, pretty fucking challenging at times. Yeah. Yeah, 20 grand there to do a paint job is a lot different than 20 grand here to do a paint job. Yeah. You know, it's total different income levels, all that, like uh, house values. You yes. know, if you're taking a $500,000 house and you're going to pay 20 grand to do it, or you're taking a $2 million house and doing 20 grand to do it. I had a guy a send difference. me uh, that I talked, you know, I talked to him a bit on Instagram. He's in, uh, he's in SoCal and he, that, you know, that, the big exterior video I just put up recently mm -hmm. he sent me a question and he said something about like, dude, how long does something like that take you guys? And then he was like, uh, how much was it? hundred grand. And it's like, damn dude, if that's like off the top of somebody's head, like yeah. Yeah, that's in California that you could get, I could get a hundred yeah. grand off of something like that. Like, pff, yeah. fuck, I may as well move back there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a big ass project. Yeah. Uh, what were we talking about before that? I had something I was going to touch on. Oh, scheduling. Um, winter time. So right, stuff. yeah, right now I just have. Uh, I I like a few weeks ago or so I booked my first you know, interior for the winter. So mm -hmm. that'll probably pop off November, December. And you never know. I, f I feel too like there's a chance that I could run through our schedule and end up needing to be um, into that job prior to November, but I'll just have to right. see. I know I was going to talk about. Um, so doing discounted pricing, sometimes I'll do that um, to fill a, to fill a gap. Usually in the winter time, I don't have to, but, um, if, if like a perfect job comes up, that would work really well, like an empty house around the holidays or an empty building around the holidays. Um, I'll, I'll talk to, so normally we send our quotes out, just we email them and text them. <laughs> um, but if it's a job that looks really good to me, I'll make a phone call on it. You know, I'll, I'll call the person, and say, you know, hey, this is John. I'm I'm getting ready to send over your quote. We're coming in at eighteen thousand four hundred. Um, how does that fit into your budget? You know, is that in the range you were looking for? Um, you know, give me an idea on how that how that works for you. You know, and just have the conversation. If it's like, oh wow, that's really high, or you know, I really got to take a look at it. I'm not sure yet how it fits in the budget. Um, I'll let them know, like, this kind of project is, you know, we have a gap in, in this time frame in the schedule. If you can book anywhere in there, like, this is a perfect project for us to fill that space. Um, I'd be willing to work on price with you, you know. So if you're if you're close, you know, if you're somewhere in that ballpark, let's talk about it. Give me a chance. If we're not, you know, I mean, if your budget's way different, I'm, I, I'm not going to be able to move that much on it. You know, we price them pretty competitively. So there's not a lot of room. But, you know, in order to keep my guys busy during that period, um, I'd be willing to work with you on price, you know, and then just let them go with that. And that usually works um, just because we typically look better than the other companies already, like from an initial phone call all the way through estimating through in-person appointment. We just look like a better company than most of them. So if they know or if they think that I have some need to fill, so I'm willing to work on price, but I'm not going to give them a cheap job. Um, you know, they feel like it's it's a real opportunity for them to take advantage of lower prices. You know, 
So giving them that option up front so they know I'm willing to work on this. Um, that's usually if I'm going to do discounts in the wintertime, that's what it would look like. You know, I don't just lower my pricing up front. Yeah. But I'll, I'll send my estimate with a phone call. You know, I'll make the phone call first. Hey, I'm getting ready to send this estimate over. Um, it's coming in at, you know, X amount of dollars. I and don't, then give them a little pitch. Yeah. I don't, uh, I, I've had some, you know, we've talked about it too in the past or whatever, like, you know, some of my, uh, my jobs I've sold that were amusing, you know what I mean? There's some shit that I said and stuff to, to yeah. try and get it sold. But, uh, I don't, I don't follow up and I don't deal with stuff. I just submit an extremely detailed bid packet and I submit with a video and, um, I know that people, you know, just by studying it, I know that that uh, they're going to see why we're more, um, and you know, they're going to see what we're about in combination with those videos and the yeah. bid packet itself, and they'll make an informed decision to go with the cheaper price. Yeah, and I, the reason I do it like that is. I don't want to barter with the competition, you know, yeah. you, if yep. you want it, if you want a cheap painter, then fucking hire one is how I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes a strong point when you can send that video with it. Um, and that's always been like my conversation with my estimator. And it's not so much anymore because it's been so ground into his head is like, I just want people to feel like if they don't choose us, they're taking risk, you know, like, yeah, I'm like, going to, uh, once I get this camera, um, I don't know if we're like, uh, I don't know when we would be coming out to California next, but we need to do you a fucking like a commercial yeah, and and give you something like that so you can play with it. Cause I want the, I want the, anal the analytics off of it and your opinion yeah. about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would. Yeah. I definitely want to do that. I mean, that's something that I think, um, I mean, I'm like a hundred percent confident that would include in increased close rate. You yeah. Know, like there's, there's, it's just like any kind of connection, anything that would strengthen connection between you and a client like increases your chances of sales you know like if they like you on the phone they like the sound of your voice if they like you in person you know like it, you're not uh unappealing you know like the things that you're saying are interesting or you know your behavior your mannerisms it's like both ways either you're off-putting or you're not you know like a, a lot of people can be real off-putting in initial conversation they're super awkward or yeah um they talk too much you know, they don't know when to stop and let the client speak. They don't know how to listen. You know, like there's so much stuff you can do to ruin your chances. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it never helps. I, I don't personally think it ever helps to um, sit there and, and have to explain, you know, like, oh, I'm better or you know, these people don't know what they're doing. You can, right. you can, you can do those things subtly. Um, yes. it's almost like, a. it's almost like, a. it's manipulation. Know, it, yeah. Yeah. A, a psychological manipulation, but yeah, most have, people think most people have such a negative connotation on, uh, manipulation on those words. Yeah. Um, that's only a negative thing, right? It's not a positive thing. I mean, yeah. If you were, if you were using it to hurt somebody, like I'm going to mani manipulate them right. to go paint this house without caulking in it, then yeah, you're right. a piece of shit. But <laughs> right. yeah. if you're using it to, to get them the best job, you know, possible. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I'm not even using it to like, Hey, I'm going to overcharge. I'm just using it to try and make a well, living so, and, and to yeah. give people quality productive work. Right. But, and it's truth that you are like, you just can't come out and say, Hey, you had this painter and this painter over, they do really shitty work. Definitely don't go with them. 
right? You know it's true that they do shitty work. You know it's true that you'll do a much better job, but you can't say, I'll do a better job than this painter and that painter because they do crappy work. Yeah. I fix projects behind them all the time. You can't say that. Yeah. You know? That's why the videos help. And then right. if you talk to a homeowner about, um, you know, a project and you ask them, you ask, I like to do, ask all of my questions on a job. I don't like to do like, you know, I don't like to itemize shit and give them too many options. I like to right. ask them what they want, what mm -hmm. they like, and use that as opportunity for conversation, you know? Yeah. And, and then after, you know, we talk about everything, I put it all in writing and then they can recount the things that we talked about. Right. And then I submit the video with it. And I mean, it's kind of like the, a whole, yeah, it's like a whole system for me that I'm trying yeah. to, to figure out. I, I can't say that I have yeah. it perfected, but I've watched it grow, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Those are things that, um, bum me out about growing is like, and I, I suppose it doesn't have to be this way. I just need better management, but, um, that would be the same for me too. Like when I would, I enjoyed sales. I enjoyed doing estimating and yeah, I would do the same thing, right. It's like kind of find out what they're looking for, you know, not tell them what I should do or what they need, but figure out what they're looking for. Like, what are their expectations? Are there some certain areas they want extra attention to whatever? And then I can give my input along the way, maybe give some recommendations if it's fits in the conversation. And then my estimate would be really personalized, you know, like call the specific things that we discussed in the estimate appointment. Yeah. You know, that way they know I was really listening well. Um, I heard them, I, you know, put in my notes, you know, like the left side gate is a little crooked. Let's try to fix that. Yeah. Whatever, whatever bullshit to make it really personalized. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's then send it over. That's exactly how I do it. You know, and, and like the, it's, it's important too when you're estimating, to have knowledge of product you know i don't yeah. know how it is like with with your guy you obviously are successful with what you guys do but uh like if you're small like you know you don't you don't know like multiple different products and application methods and stuff that might be a problem because it's your opportunity yeah. to sound intelligent or to sound like you know what you're talking about and it's mm -hmm. your opportunity to use that moment to uh, display that to the customer and use it for right. opportunity to be able to talk to them about shit. And dude, I, I'm completely anti-social, but I have to pretend like I'm not when I'm, you know, yeah. when I'm the dealing with uh, customers. So <laughs> that's same for me. So I'll usually like match a, a customer's energy, right? It's like, if they're walking fast and talking fast, I'll walk fast and talk fast. Yeah. If they're, you know, calm and mellow and quiet, I'll be calm and mellow and quiet. You know, if they, if you could tell they're awkward and uncomfortable, I'll try to make them feel, you know, more comfortable. And, um, but yeah, it's like a fun game, right? Everyone's different. Um, but there's a big difference in how my estimator sells jobs versus how I do. When I do it, I, I do what you're talking about. Like I am an expert at this stuff, you know, and I can portray it without, saying let me tell you why i'm an expert you know yeah like there's ways to get into yeah, you ne product never, knowledge you yeah, never talk knowledge. about yourself i am this i am that right. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. we're awesome this we're awesome that right that you just show it in the bid packet and and yeah. use your opportunity of of talking about product and let them assess that of you you know what i mean right yeah, but so like there's the difference. My estimator will say, oh, hey, we're one of the best companies around here, you know, like shit like that where I'm like, all right. When I say something like that, it'll be like, you know, there's a handful of really good companies around here. Uh, you know, we would be competitive with them, right? Like yeah. there, there's a handful of us out here. So it's still a way of saying the same thing. You know, there's a handful of us really good companies, but it's not arrogant. It's not, it's like just sneaking it in there, you yeah. know, for their product knowledge and expertise. It's like, uh, you know, well, this product from Dunn Edwards, this product from Sherwin Williams, this product from Vista, you know, they're, they're competitive with one another, but nobody has a special secret formula that no one else gets, you know, you just show, show some knowledge. Yeah. I like, I might say something like, you know, we're, we're a reputable company or, 
you know, um, you know, say something like, you know, do your research on all of your painters on, on all of, you know, the bid packets you're getting because it, because it is very common around here to get somebody without experience. Um, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's that's a the, way of not putting people down. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and so not you're not putting anyone down directly yourself, you know? Right. But, and, but you are if, elevating yourself. If somebody asked me a direct question, for example, like I was, I was, uh, bidding a job the other day, looking at some walls, the people were painting it themselves and they can't get to the, like the 30 foot ceilings. Mm-hmm. And they, they said something like, and, and you, you guys will, will have like nice straight and clean lines. And, and my response was, Did, I, I sent you guys videos, correct? And they said, yes. I'm like, it will fuck in my head. Like if, if you didn't get that in the videos yeah. and yeah. fuck am I supposed to say? But I, I just said, I, I will guarantee, you know, our quality and productivity over anybody's period. Yeah. Yeah. But and that's I, I try, it. I try not to have to say stuff like that, you know? Right. <clears throat> yeah. But that's also something where depending on how the conversation is going, you know, like there are certain things where it's like, I might have a conversation with someone um, where I do have to be like blat- uh, blunt about it, you yeah. know, where it's like, there's, I don't think there's anybody in this town, anywhere around here that's going to stand behind their work like I do. Like, I, I don't think it's true. There might be somebody that matches me. There's nobody that's better though. You know, like yeah. I, I actually believe that. You know, and I think that there are some companies that can do a better job or might do a better job first time around. Um, so maybe they don't have the touch up that we have to do, you know, but, but there's nobody like if you call a company in five years, cause you have a problem, I bet like 99.9% of the companies are either not going to answer the phone, not return the call or not do any touch up or help you out. You know, like we're yeah. not one of those companies, you know, like there's, I have so many things that we do that we've done for people that are not, they're not warranty things. They shouldn't be covered. We shouldn't be doing them at no cost, but we do, you know, like, yeah. And I'll, I'll have this conversation directly with a client. Like my reputation is really important to me. You know, it's like very valuable to us. We have positive online presence going back like 10 years, you know, like we're, um, we have a lot going for us and I like to maintain that. You know, so it's not a matter of like me trying to do this stuff just to 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 be sneaky. It's like, no, we take care of people. We have a good online represent uh, presentation and it works for us. You know, so it's like positive reinforcement. I'm going to keep taking care of people. People are going to keep using us. It's a great cycle for me, you know, so I'm motivated to do it. But uh, there's almost no companies that have that kind of customer service long term. You know, yeah. like that's just how it is. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I don't, uh, I don't have too much stuff that comes up where you know I have to warranty it, you know, because yeah. we, I put in so much on the front end, but yeah. you know those those cabinets are an example of, mm-hmm. well, fuck, that's it could be argued that some of it's my fault, you know, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna have to warranty an entire kitchen, so yeah, <laughs> and that's that's how it is for us, you know, when it comes down to it, it's like, look, that. You can tell when people are really rough with kitchen cabinet sets, you yeah. know, and it's like, dude, <laughs> you guys, this should not yeah. be something I just do for free. The, you know, and the, I'll tell people like, look, this time around, I'll take care of it. No charge. But, you know, this one's unique. Like them. all my lacquer in this house, uh, I, you know, the, the Sherwin forgot to inject the catalyst in my, um, in my finish, you know, mm-hmm. which can cause some some you know some interactions if your vinyl sealer is catalyzed and your top coat isn't you know what i mean yeah. so yeah um i had to refinish the cabinets and mm-hmm. sherwin pretty much had to pay me for it um and then the homeowner had a leak in his kitchen a plumber had a pipe blow their kitchen flooded um uh so you know, I think also this homeowner is like, dude, when he, he seen me at the gas station the other day and he came in and he opened my truck door and my dude, 
you know, like he's like one of those, uh, you know, you can tell he's like an old school tough guy from Boston and yeah. he was saying something like, uh, <clears throat> what did he say? Um, I thought it was cute, but he is like, you know, he's like in his, in his late fifties and he's like, dude, uh, I, you know, he said, I, I said something about, I don't want to tell you that I'll, cause Jeremiah was standing outside the truck. I want to say in front of your employee that I'd fight you or whatever. But, uh, he's like, you're avoiding me. I was like, dude, I ain't avoiding you. Fucking, I just gave you a courtesy call like a couple months ago. Let you know, I was still thinking about you and shit. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> anyway, I went to his house a couple days later or whatever and joked around with him, you know, like, mm-hmm. Well, I figure since you're threatening me at gas stations, <laughs> uh, yeah. and and then I was and then I was like, um, and like I said, they're cool or whatever. But then I was like, and yeah. this, you know, then I was saying it out loud, and I was like, this motherfucker yeah. doesn't even realize I'd fight him at a shitty gas station. But uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, I told him like, dude, we'll you know we'll take care of you. Like, yeah. you know, it's not something that I want to warranty and that I feel is a hundred percent my responsibility because I feel like this wood was not kiln dried properly and it should not have shrank yeah. like it has. And plus they had a water leak in their house and sent, you know, sent a bunch of moisture in the kitchen and blah, blah, blah. But, mm-hmm. you know, and I also think this dude is a little crooked. I think personally after the leak, he had me give him an estimate for refinishing and I just, I helped him out and I just fucking, I did like a hundred some odd dollars a linear foot, you know, to, to see if he could get money. And like when I went there, there's a piece of trim around each of the cabinets. I would roll the dice and bet money that he took insurance money and just put a piece of trim at the bottom of the cabinets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then I'm going to end up refinishing these fucking cabinets for free. And then he already took an insurance claim and he'll hide, hide that from me. But that shit's yeah. on his conscience, not mine. You know, right. I'm going to do yep. what's right for my customers. So, yeah. Good. All Even right, we'll if it's not my note. fucking fault, you know? Yeah. It all comes back to you, I think. Good and bad. I think you do enough good out there. It keeps you going. Okay. All good? Yep. All right, man. See you later. Later. As always, please like our YouTube page, give us five-star only reviews on all podcast platforms. If you have questions or comments, send them over to hello at paintsniffers.com or on Instagram at paint underscore sniffers. You can also watch the video version of the podcast on the Alpha Painting YouTube page. Go to playlists and it will be filed under Paint Sniffer Podcast. Via YouTube, you can write into qa at paintsniffer.com. Thank you for listening to Paint Sniffer Podcast.